In the late 1990s, the video game landscape was dominated by the advent of three-dimensional games reaching home consoles. Mario, Sonic, and Crash Bandicoot were already pioneers of this new landscape. Both Castlevania, Konami had a difficult decision to make. Would their franchise continue to be a traditional sprite-based side-scroller, or would they completely redesign the game mechanics to fit a 3D world, as Nintendo had done with Mario? In the end, they chose to do both. The N64 would get a fully 3D polygon-based entry in Castlevania 64, while the PlayStation would get a traditional sprite-based side-scroller in Symphony of the Night. While Symphony was initially overlooked as appearing dated for the time, it would slowly shed that negative perception, becoming a cult classic, and alongside Super Metroid, establish the Metroidvania subgenre, which would go on to be used as a foundational model for hundreds of beloved side-scrollers of the future, including the Castlevania series itself. So let's break one of my favorite games of all time, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Right away, we should probably establish which version of the game we're talking about. The original Symphony was released on PlayStation in the US in 1997, and later ported to the Sega Saturn, then the Xbox 360, then the PS3, PSB, PlayStation TV, and Vita as an official PSX emulation, to the PSB again as part of Dracula X Chronicles, to the Xbox 360 again as part of the Konami Classics Volume 1, to the PS4 as part of Castlevania Requiem, and most recently to iPhone and Android as a standalone app, which makes cataloging the exploits for this game a web of contradicting information. So to keep things simple, I'm going to be playing the original US PlayStation version. Depending on the version you have, some or all of these glitches might work, but the easiest way to check your patch is to see what voice acting you have. If the intro to your game sounds like... What is a man? A miserable little pile of secrets! Then most, if not all, of these should work for you. In our glitch playthrough, we begin before the game does, on the File Select screen. Create a new file and name it x x exclamation point v apostrophe apostrophe q. This is one of a few secret file name codes that allow Alucard to begin the game with altered stats. This one sets his luck stat to 99, but heavily nerfs all his others. This type of playthrough is often referred to as luck mode, and while it itself isn't a glitch, what we're going to do with it is. Putting Alucard aside for now, we first have to play through the opening as Richter. You might think this part of the game doesn't matter much since we're about to switch characters anyway, but there are a few things we can do as Richter that will carry over to Alucard. If you collect at least 40 hearts before battling Dracula, Alucard will start with a neutron bomb in his inventory. If you use them all up before the fight ends, he will start with a heart refresh as well. And if you beat Dracula without taking any damage, Alucard will start with bonus HP. Once Dracula's down and you've swapped over to controlling his son, we can set up our first glitch. When Alucard first enters the castle, he does so carrying some of the strongest equipment in the game. But only a few screens in, he will encounter Death, who takes away all of that incredible in-game gear and scatters it throughout the castle. The developers wanted you to get a taste of Alucard at his full power, so that you would be invested in collecting his equipment again for the game's end state. But what they didn't anticipate was that there would be a way for you to never lose it in the first place. While there are a few different methods to skip the encounter with Death, the easiest has to do with the code we entered on the file select screen. When Alucard takes damage from an enemy, he gets knocked backward. But if a single hit from an enemy is so strong that it takes away over half of his health in one blow, he will be rocketed away and continue flying until he hits a wall. We can't power up the enemies found in the room before the cutscene with death, but we can power down Alucard. By starting in luck mode with Alucard's maximum health nerfed to 25, it's possible to jump over the first wolf in the hallway that leads to death, unequip all of his in-game armor to lower his defense, and then walk into the wolf to take 20 points of damage and be rocketed past the cutscene with death before it even has a chance to begin. At this point, the game is in a weird state where it thinks a cutscene is playing, but also not playing, so you will be unable to pause the game until reaching a save room. Now, we can re-equip all of our in-game items to use immediately, and so the luck code that we used on the title screen that was supposed to nerf Alucard's stats for a more difficult playthrough 
has actually left him more powerful than ever. After clearing our way through the Alchemy Laboratory and the Marble Gallery, we have a brief interaction with Maria in the giant clock room and make our way to the outer wall to activate the elevator and pick up the wolf transformation. In a normal playthrough, transforming into a wolf doesn't really unlock anything, but we are going to be putting it to use right away. Take the elevator down all the way to the bottom and then proceed to the screen below. Here there is a vase in the upper right corner of the screen that contains a garnet, an item that we need for a later glitch but our current jump isn't high enough to reach the platform. You're supposed to climb to the top of the castle and collect the Leap Stone, which allows Alucard to double jump, then come back and collect the Garnet afterward. However, for this playthrough, we won't be needing the Leap Stone at all. To get the Garnet now, first transition to the screen below, transform into a wolf, and then double tap left to begin the wolf's dash back up the stairs. Then, during the screen transition, jump and switch to holding right instead of left. This will convert the wolf's horizontal speed into vertical speed, which is just enough to reach the platform without double jumping. Break the pot to collect the garnet, and just hold on to it for now. The next major progression item we need is the mist transformation, which is found all the way in the Colosseum, back in the direction we came from. To get there, pass through the right half of the marble gallery, and return to the giant clock room. Once again, the game assumes we have the ability to double jump at this point, so we need another exploit to make up for the fact that we don't. First, jump into the air and transform into a wolf, then immediately transform back. When coming out of an aerial transformation, Alucard has the ability to dive kick by pressing jump again while holding diagonal down left or down right. By dive kicking onto the burning torch in this room, you bounce off of it, essentially forcing a double jump despite lacking the ability to do so innately. Thankfully for us, the other two jumps needed to make it to the next area are standard height, so no exploit needed there. We're now in Ulrox's quarters, but won't be for long. We have no need to fight the boss of this area, and can instead pass directly through and head straight for the Colosseum. While our damage output is incredible for this stage of the game, our overall health is still quite low due to the luck code, so it's imperative to make sure Alucard doesn't take too many hits while making our way to the boss. Just outside the entrance to the boss room is a library card, something we will be making use of very soon. This boss fight is the first real interaction Alucard has with Richter, immediately after which he escapes and the boss battle begins against the werewolf and minotaur. Once again, our damage output is... I mean, it, it's really good. So finishing these two off shouldn't take long. Once they fall, we can head into the following room to pick up the mist transformation, allowing Alucard to pass through solid bars. But before leaving the Colosseum, we need to pick up one more item. Make your way all the way down to the bottom of the area, and enter the room on the far left. This room is absolutely packed with enemies, so I like to bring the stopwatch to freeze some of the weaker ones. On the pedestal at the end of this room lies the shield rod, an item that has different effects based on what shield Alucard currently has equipped, and an important item for defeating Dracula at the end of our playthrough. Our next destination is the library, which is, once again, back the way we came. I think even the developers knew this excessive backtracking might be a bit annoying, so this is a great time to use the library card they left for us teleporting Alucard there, rather than having to take him there ourselves. We appear directly in front of the room with the Librarian, this game's one and only merchant. He sells quite a few helpful items, including potions, spells, maps, and if you've beaten the game before, Duplicator, which converts single-use consumable items into permanent items. But the thing is, we're broke. For conducting any sort of business with the Librarian, we need to make some cash, and what better way to do that than with an infinite money glitch? One thing to note here is that for this glitch to work, you have to have never met the librarian before on this file, and you need a second already completed file on the same memory card. We need to skip the cutscene that plays when you talk to the librarian for the first time, and the game won't let you skip cutscenes if it thinks this is your first playthrough, so keep that in mind. First, make your way right a few screens until meeting the staircase. In order to perform the currency glitch, we need the help of the fairy familiar, which is found on a platform at the top of the stairs that must be flown to something Alucard definitely can't do at this point in our playthrough. The exploit we'll use to get around that fact is a combination of the wolf jump we used to collect the garnet back at the outer wall, and the dive kick we used to pass through the giant clock room. Starting from the base of the staircase, transform into a wolf and double tap right to begin running up the stairs. Before you reach the gray colored pillar at the top of the stairs, jump and switch to holding left to convert the wolf's horizontal speed into vertical speed once again. 
Now we need to buy ourselves time in the air for this book enemy to begin chasing us so that we can dive kick off of it. To do that, transform from the wolf into mist, then float diagonally up left for as long as you can until you are automatically forced back into Alucard. Finally, perform a diagonal down right dive kick into the book, and then immediately hold left. This exploit is deceptively tricky because it requires several fairly tight timings, and relies on getting good RNG from the book so that it moves to the right place at the right time. Thankfully, it's easy to set up again if you fail it, and if all else fails, you can come back here after collecting the bat. Directly to the left, there is a room with an anti-venom, a potion, and the fairy card, the last item we need to get infinite money. With the fairy in hand, return to the librarian, and just outside his door, pause the game and equip the fairy card from the relics menu. When the fairy enters the current screen, she will begin speaking. The moment that happens, pass through the door to have her dialogue be cut off by the librarian's dialogue. Now press start to skip his cutscene and interrupt both of them. Doing this allows you to pause while interacting with the librarian's buy and sell menus, which is what makes this next glitch possible. First, select sell item. Now pause the game and equip the garnet we picked up in the outer wall. The librarian only checks how many items we have in our inventory when we first open the sell menu, so he thinks we have one garnet. But since Alucard is now wearing that one, we technically have zero garnets in our current inventory. So when we sell the one garnet the librarian thinks we have, the game subtracts one from zero. And because this particular variable is not allowed to be a negative number, the garnet quantity rolls over to the maximum possible that can be carried, which is 255. Now, by backing out of the sell menu and entering it again, the librarian will check our current inventory once more, but this time see that we have 255 garnets all of which can be sold for a total of 1,275,000 gold, which is more than max cash. With only performing one instance of the glitch, you can already afford everything the librarian sells, with the Jewel of Open and Duplicator being the most helpful. But if you're only interested in the bare minimum needed to finish the game, nothing from the librarian is technically necessary when glitches are involved. Something we cannot skip, however, is Alucard's bat form. To get it, Make your way back to the stairs to the right of the librarian's room. We need to make the jump to another platform, this time around the midpoint of the stairs. This one also requires the double jump to reach normally, but just as before, using a wolf jump into the mist transformation will allow us to skip it. Thankfully, this platform is closer to the staircase than the one from before, so dive kicking off of a book isn't necessary this time. In the following room, we will have a short encounter with the lesser demon, and can then use the mist form to pass through a metal barricade and collect the bat transformation. With that, we now have everything we need to finish the game. In a normal playthrough, you could use the items we have now to reach Richter at the top of the castle and defeat him to see the game's credits. But anyone that knows anything about Symphony of the Night knows that everything we've been through so far is only the first half of the game. If we were to fight Richter now, we would get the game's bad ending, with Alucard never finding the inverted castle and never defeating Dracula. In order to avoid this, we would need to travel to the underground caverns and defeat the Succubus for the Gold Ring, then go to Ulrox's quarters and defeat him for the Echo of Bat, then use the Echo in the Catacombs to collect the Spike Breaker, then use the Spike Breaker to make it through a booby-trapped hallway in the chapel to collect the Silver Ring, then take both the Gold and Silver Rings to the Giant Clock Room to meet Maria for the Holy Glasses, and then finally use the Holy Glasses to see the Dark Priest that's controlling Richter. That's a lot of work to do, just to make it one room left of Richter's boss room. I'm sure you're way ahead of me at this point, but yeah, we can use a glitch to skip all five of these items and go to the inverted castle right now. To start, go through either the chapel or clock tower to reach the castle keep at the top of the map. Use the bat form to fly up the collapsed staircase that leads to Dracula's throne room, and stop at the entrance. Since we don't have the holy glasses, proceeding forward from here would lock us into the bad ending and send us to the credits as soon as Richter was defeated. However, the good ending is actually the game's default, and weirdly enough, the place where the game checks which ending you should currently receive is an invisible box along the floor at the top of the stairs, meaning that if we're extremely precise, we can just jump over it. First, break this brick in the wall to reveal the hidden switch that unlocks the staircase to the castle loft. You don't actually need to go there, or even push the switch, but we are about to perform a very specific jump, and we need that brick to be out of the way in order to get the correct angle. Now, align Alucard's back foot so that it is perfectly square with the edge of the top stair. Now transform into a wolf. While in wolf form, 
you want to double tap left and jump at the same time in order to get this exact jump arc, in which the wolf does not leave a trail behind. If your jump looks like this instead, your jump was too late, and if your jump looks like this, it was too early. The correct jump arc is low enough that it just passes beneath the stone wall, but high enough that it passes over the invisible trigger along the floor. Among other things, this trigger locks the camera vertically in preparation for the boss fight up ahead. So once you perform the jump correctly, you can check if you have a glitch active by flying up toward the ceiling. If you see the sky clipping through, you've done it correctly and are ready for the next step. Now that the camera's unlocked and the ending check was never made, you can simply walk forward and the cutscene that plays after the inverted castle has been revealed will start. Then Alucard will automatically walk through the portal on his own, despite the fact that we have none of the required items and have never battled Richter, period. So, how do we reach Dracula? Well, the inverted castle is quite literally the upside down version of the main castle meaning that half the game's content is found here. We are supposed to travel through the castle to find and defeat five major bosses from Castlevania 1 and collect the five relics of Vlad in order to resurrect him in the center of the map and defeat him for good. But here's the problem. We've made it this far by skipping huge sections of the game and even starting with lower stats than normal. I've been emphasizing during this playthrough that we have lower health than an average player would, and that is doubly true in the inverted castle but we are also a lower level overall than an average player would be because of everything we skipped. Yet somehow, we now have to defeat five in-game bosses to collect the necessary items to proceed. So how do we deal with the fact that we have skipped so much of the game that we can't play the rest of it? Simple. We skip even more. Though Dracula is supposed to be revived from the five relics of Vlad, the funny thing about game logic is that it really couldn't care less about lore. Mechanically speaking, Dracula is already there waiting for us in his boss room at the center of the map, and the five relics function more like a key, opening up the door to his chamber. That means if we could clip through that door, there would be no reason to collect them in the first place. No reason to complete any of the inverted castle, period. Of course, we do still have to get to the castle center. To do that, the route I like to take is to the right, through the anti-chapel, past Medusa, who can be defeated fairly easily if you locate your duck button, and then left through Deathwing's lair. The reason I like to go this way is that you pass by a hidden room in the floor that contains a heart refresh. This is a required item to perform the next glitch, and so taking this path is an easy way to pick one up along your way if you don't already have one. Continuing forward, you will fly up a long vertical shaft and then climb up and out of the area to reach the inverted giant clock room, which is ultimately our goal, but without the five relics, the door is locked and it's impossible to reach Dracula normally. If we take a look at the map, you can see that a save room lies on the opposite side of the door, with an empty space where there is nothing, and then a second save room to the right of it, which is part of the black marble gallery. Glitches do exist in Symphony of the Night, which allow you to clip horizontally from one room into an adjacent one, even if it's through a wall. But in this situation, there is no way to get immediately horizontal to any room in this section. That means that if we try to clip from here, Alucard will be suspended in nothingness, and immediately fall through the ceiling into the room below, defeating the purpose of the clip in the first place. However, when a clip like this is performed that places Alucard out of the bounds of the map, there is a single frame in which Alucard exists between the two rooms, in which the game hasn't yet decided which one he should be pushed into. If we can act frame perfectly, we can have Alucard travel along the border of these rooms until he's within Dracula's chamber, then allow the game to push us vertically back into bounds. Get ready. Here comes the most challenging glitch of the playthrough. By going down the hallway directly to the right of the clock room, you'll enter the black marble gallery, and can then use the bat form to fly up and to the left to reach the save room that lies directly to the right of Dracula's chamber. Make sure to save the game here, because if you mess up the trick, you might have to reload the game to try again. The exploit we're about to use is known as the reverse shift line. It involves desyncing Alucard from the camera that follows him by one pixel, so that the edges of rooms overflow and he's able to trigger the transition borders of multiple rooms at the same time while walking between them. Specifically, the pixel we want to manipulate is this last one on the left edge. Because the black marble gallery uses tiled squares as part of its floor design, 
this specific column of pixels is really easy to see, so just keep your eye here. Now we need to identify the farthest point right that Alucard can travel without the camera scrolling and cutting off this leftmost pixel, which ends up with him being about here. Now we need to move Alucard one pixel or more to the right without allowing the camera to scroll. There are a few ways to do this, but one of the easiest relates to the heart refresh that we picked up earlier. The heart refresh is a rare single use item that restores up to 500 hearts back to Alucard's counter so that he can use more sub weapons. But we don't really care about that. What matters for us is that the heart refresh also has a long over the top activation animation that pauses everything in game until it completes. If you press right and activate a heart refresh at the same time, Alucard will move forward for exactly one frame, but the item animation will prevent the movement of the camera, desyncing it from Alucard. The timing of the heart refresh is a bit precise, but if you purchase the duplicator from the librarian with the infinite money glitch, you can duplicate your heart refresh and try as many times as you like without having to reset. Once you hit the correct timing and see Alucard shift forward without losing that ever so important left edge pixel, hold down the backward dash button so that it occurs on the first possible frame after the end of the heart refresh animation, putting you well within the safe zone in which the camera will not scroll, and ensuring that the desynchronization remains true. Now have Alucard pass through the screen transition to the left, which causes him to mistakenly appear on the left side of the following screen instead of the right. This in turn triggers that screen's transition to the next room, meaning that an entire room gets skipped. This would be fine if the room beyond this point were part of Dracula's chamber, but as we've established already, there's an empty space between the two. So when Alucard transitions into this out-of-bounds location, he immediately falls through the ceiling and into the room below, which would accomplish nothing. To prevent this, we have to transform into a bat on the first possible frame after the out-of-bounds warp, catching Alucard as he falls and placing him here on the vertical line between the two screens, something that's admittedly easier said than done. If you transform one frame too early, you will appear as a bat beneath the ceiling well within bounds, and if you transform one frame too late, you won't transform at all and Alucard will fall straight through, so expect this to take a few tries. Once we manage to hit the proper frame, and end up stuck above the ceiling, we still aren't out of the woods yet. If you try to move normally as the bat, the game will eventually eject you out of the ceiling before we make it far enough to the left to clip back in bounds. To make it far enough left to actually clip inside Dracula's chamber, you'll need to use a technique called the wing smash. This is an intended mechanic that can only be performed while in bat form and doesn't require any other items. First, hold down jump, then quickly press up, diagonal upright, right, diagonal down right, down, diagonal down left, left, and then release jump. This will cause Alucard to rocket forward at top speed while invincible and dealing damage to enemies, though it doesn't last very long. One wing smash doesn't take us far enough to clip into Dracula's chamber, but thankfully, this move can be chained together over and over to maintain the speed for as long as necessary, provided that you have enough MP and don't mess up the admittedly complicated inputs. Because the window to execute all these inputs is so short, this can be the most difficult part of the glitch for a new player, but once you manage to chain at least 5, Alucard will make it far enough left that he ends up on the border between the save room that is part of Dracula's inner chamber and the hallway that leads to the Black Marble Gallery, and this will happen, as the game tries to decide which of the two rooms Alucard should be pushed into. In order to escape this loading and unloading loop, hold left, and eventually, Alucard will pop back in bounds within the inner castle without collecting a single Relic of Vlad, better known as Relic Skip. All that remains is the boss battle with the Dark Priest and the battle that immediately follows it with Dracula. Save the game here, and then take the elevator up into the final room of the game. We are still severely underpowered at this point, and are about to take on the hardest boss in the game. But luckily, we picked up something earlier in preparation for this moment, the Shield Rod. This is a melee weapon that can cast a spell which changes based on which shield is equipped alongside it, and it just so happens that the best effect comes from the Alucard shield, the one that we've been using since we skipped death at the very beginning of the game. By pressing both attack buttons at the same time while the shield rod and Alucard shield are equipped simultaneously, this animation will play, and the Alucard shield will gain the bonus effect that blocking damage with it will restore HP. However, due to an oversight, the shield will now also deal damage every frame equal to the amount that it was meant to block, meaning that just by holding the block button and jumping into an enemy, 
you will deal thousands of points of damage per second. The Priest will go down this quickly. And the final battle with Dracula, a boss who has significantly more health than any other enemy in the game, is made into a joke of a fight that only lasts about 6 seconds. With Dracula defeated, the castle disappears, Alucard goes into hiding and adopts the use of a pseudonym, not to be seen again until the year 2035 when we meet him again as Soma in Castlevania Aria of Sorrow. So, maybe I should cover that one next year. What do you think? First off, a big thank you to those of you that made it this far. Obviously, there's no way that a single video could be a fully exhaustive list of every glitch that exists in Symphony. So if you know more about the glitches that I did not include and want to share, feel free to leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, consider clicking the sub button. Glitching games is what I do, so chances are you'll like what I have coming in the future. As always, hope this video has been a pleasure. Happy Halloween.